ambassadors of Christ. You know, that's what uh, Christians are supposed to be. And even though many people, let's say that 85% of our nation is Christian, Christian born, that is to say, uh, yet many of them have the seasons confused. In other words, they confuse the birth with the conception. That's fine. An ambassador always makes the best of a situation. You turn a negative to a positive. And uh, that's what it's all about. I want to talk about the gift that we really received, salvation. But we received it in the form of Messiah, the Savior. We're going to talk and from even the Old Testament as we begin qualifications. So open your Bibles, if you would, to Isaiah chapter 49. <clears throat> An ambassador in the Greek tongue is presbuo, presbuo, um, and uh, it means uh, what what it really means is to to act as a representative. And when you act as a, if you carry the name Christian, you're a representative of Christianity. That's why you want to be, you want to protect your credibility and uh, so forth. Chapter 49, verse 1, the great book of Isaiah, the call, the qualifications, and the mission of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 1 reads, Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, you people, from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name, that is to say, Messiah, that is to say, Savior. That was his purpose, the whole purpose, no other purpose, as Savior. Verse 2. And he hath made um, my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me. He's, he's the weapon that God uses. And that weapon is the one that is to say to restore true Israel 
through, though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. What's your strength? If you think your strength is anywhere other than in Almighty God Himself, you are mistaken. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will always be with us. Though the whole world come against Christianity, though the whole world come against the name Yahweh, Almighty God, they're not going anywhere. They're not going to get anywhere. Because we draw our strength and from God and our wall of protection is God. Don't ever forget that or you can leave something hanging out that could get in much trouble in this world in this cosmos, and the way things are going at this time. Verse 6, And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, to restore them, to bring them back, and to restore and preserve, uh, be preserved uh, um, of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. That's quoted again in Luke chapter 2. What is he? What is his? What is his call? Savior. Salvation. To restore. To put back in order. I don't know. Is your life kind of messed up? You want it put back in order? I'll tell you where to go. Go to him. And let his word, that sword, shape up and save your life. Give you eternal life. Verse 7. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to him whom man, hath, uh, to whom man despiseth, to him who the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship, because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. He already has chosen. And he will also choose you. If you follow him. If you pay attention. If, if you believe, quite frankly. It's that simple. No one can miss in believing upon him and receiving his blessings. Verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time. This is why we came here. In an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee. And I will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. heritage. This is, this is the purpose, the call, the qualification, and most of all his mission. And, you know, he's looking for some partakers thereof that become a part of that mission simply by believing, believing upon Almighty God. Uh, and uh, verse 9, and it reads, That thou mayest say to the prisoners, Go forth to them that are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. Where do you graze at? Where do you take his word from? I mean, that's what you go to pasture for, is to receive the word of God. That's what a pastor is for. And uh, the high places, of course, is the word of God. Christ, who is that living word. Verse 10, They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them. Even by the springs of water shall he guide them. By that still water, by that water that runs deep, by that water that is the Spirit of God, that, um, that God utilizes to bring forth that Holy Spirit, that truth, that does protect, that does guide, and that does lead forth. You know, that's quite a promise. And yet people will let themselves slip and slide and uh, fall from grace when they've got him there all the time. All you have to do is say, I love you. Help me. Turn to him. And he's going to reach out and guide you. That's his promise. 
and he always keeps his word. Verse 10, uh, verse uh, 11. Then I will make all my mountains away. In other words, even the high places, there's going to be a path. And naturally, Christ is that way. And my highways shall be exalted. Um, they're going to be above the valley. You're going to travel the high road when you travel with me. Behold, these shall come from far. And lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinem. And that is to say, even to China. One more verse. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. And break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. Why? How? Through Christ. That's how God shows mercy, because he has unmerited favor that he shares with you. You may not deserve it, but when you repent and when you ask for his guidance, he's going to be there for you. You can count on him. And I guess in this season we could say, can he count on you? Because I know we all fall short, but at the same time, believe and know and understand that this is his purpose to save. This is his mission, and his qualifications are that he was chosen by Almighty God, the only begotten Son, to lead and guide and direct. But at the accepted time, God has a time plan. In the next lecture in two weeks, we're going to go a great deal into that time plan. We're going to go a great deal into the signs of the current uh, events of the year 2006 as we move into that globe. So the acceptable time is very important. But at the same time, in knowing the time, the signs, and the seasons, stay in the basics and know that God loves you. And that he sent this one, that's what this is about, is your salvation, your eternal life. That he loves you enough that he came himself, Emmanuel, God, with us to set this mission, this course. And certainly he has the qualifications. Go with me to the New Testament book of Romans. Romans chapter 5 I want to go to. The accepted time. God has a time and a season for everything. Chapter 5, verse 1, the great book of Romans. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know, do you have peace? That's a very simple statement. Do you have peace of mind? He tells you here how to acquire it. Okay. If your family needs peace of mind, through our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our peace. He is our rest. He, he has the calling. It is his mission to bring that. So don't, don't plead the fact that you don't know how to find peace and rest. You have him. And he loves you. Verse 2, by whom also we have access, now get this, we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Um, everything moves for us. His whole plan circulates around his, his, the one, those that love him. Gentile, Israel, it doesn't matter. Whomsoever will. That's your way, and that's the path, and that's the key. That key of faith will open doors that no one can close the truth of God's Word. Christ's tongue, which is a two-edged sword, all stemming and looking forward to the acceptable time. Verse 3, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Bring it on. But I just hate problems. For Christianity's sake, bring it on. Go ahead, try to, try to knock down Christianity and see what happens to you. Try to knock down the Word of God and see what happens to you. Christians make a stand, and uh, they, they do not mind tribulations for Christ's sake. Knoweth that tribulation worketh patience. Do you know what patience is? 
That's endurance. That gives you endurance to stick to it, to overcome, to accomplish, to be an ambassador, to be a servant of God. Do you know and realize that he himself called himself a servant? And he serves you when you love him and when you believe upon him and when you seek that peace do you think he's going to withhold it from you when you with love and sincerity ask him do you think he's going to hold it away from you no you're going to have it you know let the rocky bumps go to somebody else you take the peaceful way that's being wiser than the serpent so patience is endurance don't forget it verse 4 and patience let's just say endurance experience do you know what experience is it's character I don't know how's your character and experience let's just say your character brings hope do you know what hope is is confidence do you have confidence or do you in yourself and your ability to do God's work or do you shake a lot do you hold back a lot that's fine you know I mean, but again experience builds character you'll learn pretty soon hey I don't mind this tribulation for Christ because why he always allows us to beat him into the ground with love of course and and so it is our enemies are our enemies and our friends are our friends and anybody that loves Christ or minds their own business is a friend but those that come against Christianity they're an enemy and we know how to handle enemies so that hope again giving you confidence to know you don't have anything to worry about you don't have any fear that should upset you because God has given us the victory and hope verse 5 and hope that's to say confidence maketh not a shame it never disappoints it never disappoints you when you think on the deeper level with confidence because the love of God is shed abroad it floods in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us given unto us it's a gift charisma from that father that loves us so much it is that gift so what is this time whether it's conception or the birth an ambassador makes the makes hay while the sun shines all for the name of Christ all for pushing ahead all for teaching truth you can take that that is confused and straighten it up in some people's minds to bring a truth but always take advantage of an opportunity it would seem that some Christians feel that everyone should be on the same level they are well as you advance in learning naturally a new person you've got to be gentle you've got to have patience you've got to be gentle with them or you could turn them away so you, you have to learn this is why Jesus would say three times to Peter feed my sheep then he says feed my lambs my little ones feed them too and then feed my sheep on three levels be gentle be gentle with all and know but by the grace of God there go I you're an ambassador of Christ you call the name Christian do you know people should be able to tell by watching you what kind of a Christian you are okay because you are that representative verse 6 and when we were yet without strength that's in our own weakness at the beginning in due time Christ died for the ungodly he died for sinners okay and he did that so that in his perfection you could have forgiveness verse 7 for scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet for adventure for a good man some would even dare to die it, it's just possible that it would happen in the military it happens often verse 8 but God commendeth he proves his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us you know it's kind of hard to die for somebody that's against you 
But if they're your children, it makes it all together a different light. And you are a child of God, and all sinners are children of God. They may not claim Him, but they are His children. And He opened that gate, and that Spirit floods in, if, if they will receive it. Verse 9, this is why we came here. Much more then, being now justified by His blood, He wants to protect you. The, learning the truth and the fact that uh, you were made innocent by his, his blood, not yours, his blood, justified by divine acquittal. No sinner in heaven receive God's blessings. Find that peace. Reach out and take it. Take it into your life. That peace and tranquility of ble the blessed hope and understanding that our Father hears all and heals all in the ultimate. Verse 10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. That is to say, life eternal. Peace. Reach out. Take hold of it. Don't, don't waste your life. Hang on to that peace, that truth, that tranquility. Christ, you're an ambassador. Verse 11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. That's to say... Through Him, we receive that reconciliation. Where, where would you be without it? And what a wonderful time of the year that the conception, God sent Him to do this for us in this season and at that accepted time. But there are other accepted times. And those times you must be attuned to. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians. And let's stick with chapter 5. Same thought in mind, reconciliation, ambassadors, carrying forth God's word, setting an example. It can also mean teaching or preaching, but you, you, you receive a gift that is yours, and you're good at what he gives you as a gift. Why? Because it's charisma. That's what the word gift means in the Greek tongue. The ultimate, of course, is when the spurious Messiah appears, and you stand against him at the accepted time and stand before the world and allow that Holy Spirit, that Prince of Peace, the reconciler of those that will believe, speak through you to accomplish one of the greatest things in the world is to let that two-edged sword of Christ flow and bring that truth to the world. Truth to the world. Chapter 5 I'm in 1 Corinthians. That will work. 2 Corinthians. And let's pick it up at verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You know, it's a great thing when your life gets changed. Mm -hmm. 
those old things are passed away. They're just not there. It changes your life. Uh, verse 18, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. By who? How did we get there? By Jesus Christ. Uh, that's to say, Yahweh's Savior, the Anointed One, being totally translated to English. And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. I don't know, how often do you use it? That's what it's about. To reconcile. Do you know what that means? It means to not to force someone to change your mind. Not to use psychology to plead and beg and make someone commit. But to reconcile means a change of mind as atonement. To come because they want to come. To hear because they want to hear by the example that you set forth in your very life. People drawing to you to hear that truth and to know it. The ministry of reconciliation. And isn't it strange, but you'll have people that will take all things too far. Just that, that means God's going to reconcile even Satan. Don't listen to fools. As a student of God's Word, you know that Satan has already been sentenced to die. And deservedly so. So, but reconcile what we can. There are people hurting and there's people suffering. They need your presence. That is to say, your very life as it is, setting that example as an ambassador. If you think I'm telling you that you need to go out and go to preach and you don't understand, Live the Christian life. It's the greatest advertising in the world of compassion, of understanding, of reaching for that golden ring called peace that comes through Christ. And to know and to understand, you deserve it when you believe upon Him, but not until. Not until. For we do all fall short, but you know something? God still loves them. This is why you want to be aware of religions that say, do you go around sinners? That's what we were sent for. Okay. To reconcile. You, know, you think you're going to convert one of these goody-goody two-shoes self-righteous hypocrites? I don't think so. They're past saving. Okay. You're, you can have a go at it. Hey, okay. You can have a go at it, but they're not going to listen to you. They know everything got it all down. It's in the book. Okay. But reconciliation comes through love, patience, hope, endurance, understanding, and living it. That's what brings it to pass. That is the ministry of reconciliation. Okay, and verse 19. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, not marking up those sins when they're forgiven, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. I don't know what kind of word comes from your mouth. Is it reconciling? Is it peace? Is it corrective? You see, it's okay to be corrective and to understand. You, if you love a brother, that's the way it goes, okay? But that's what we have. Through his son, we have that ministry of reconciliation. And you know something? The greatest, one of the greatest gifts you can give to someone is Christ by their own choice. That is to say, they themselves choose him because of the example that you set forth. Verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. That's what you are. And again, ambassador is presby... Oh, okay. You might, might have heard the English word presbyter, okay? You're, you are... Um, uh, uh, you act as a representative for Christ. And... Uh, Enjoy it. Where does it come from? From Christ. Verse 20. 
Now, then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. That, that's the plan. And um, uh, do it on behalf of Christ, accepting Christ, knowing Christ, and being Christ-led. That's what makes the difference. Verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Christ knew no sin. Christ never sinned. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He did that so that you can do what? What is righteousness? It's doing what's right. As a Christian born and as reconciled to Almighty God, you should want to do what's right and it should... It should canker you a little bit to have to, for someone to suggest doing something wrong. It just should go against your will and your personality. Now, why we came here, chapter 6, verse 1. We then, as workers together with him. You got that? Well, I, I don't like that word work too much. Well, why don't you? Working together with Him is a wonderful thing. Your very presence when you hold the Holy Spirit sets forth that spirit of reconciliation, that ministry of reconciliation. Be, um, gather with Him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Don't pick it up and then throw it away. Don't, don't pull away from it after you receive it. Live it. Don't waste it. Uh, you can even say tuhu if you want to from the Hebrew and it'd fit. Verse 2. And to, to complete this lecture. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Guaranteed it. Guaranteed you. Got you secured, nailed down for eternal life forever. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. There is an accepted time and a place for everything. For every sign, for every seal. And that time of salvation is this particular advent. That time of salvation is now. And uh, that's why Christ came. That was his mission. That is his purpose. And he's looking for help. He can use you, but you have to choose it for yourself. You have to want it for yourself. An ambassador of Christ, think about it. Not because you're perfect, but because he was. And he could be that accepted sacrifice for one and all times. A sacrifice for you, for the world, for anyone that would believe upon him. What a season, what a time. Yeah, it's the time of the, the conception. But it's when that promise came forth. It's when the promise was fulfilled. The accepted time for birth. The accepted time for conception. The accepted time for salvation. And there is the other times approaching. Benchmarks that we must be aware of. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for being with us. We ask that you lead, guide, and direct, Father, in this accepted time, this generation, Father, of thy Son and our Savior. Amen, amen. The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark 
mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of the mark of the beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. Please never... ask a question about a particular individual, reverend, or some denomination. Let's don't judge people. People have to know that they have one judge, and that's God, and he's sufficient. And uh, that's, that's what he is about. It's a sin for us to judge other people. You're not supposed to do that. God takes care of business. All you have to do is take care of his word in, in obedience. So, those of you that listen by short wave around the world at this time, always a pleasure. Your announcer at the end of the hour will give you our mailing address. Now, if you've got a prayer request, you don't need that number. You don't need the address. Why? God knows what you're thinking. Do you know and do you realize that you're different than anyone else? There's nobody else like you. Your DNA is different. Your fingerprints are different. Why did God make someone like you? Because he loves you and he's, you're his child. And he wants you to love him. That's what he wants, is your love in return. Let him know. Once you do that, uh, it makes his day when you let him know you love him. Father, around the globe we come, we ask that you need guide, direct Father, touch in Yeshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Okay, and we'll get right into some questions here. we got Ray from Connecticut. Will relations between the U.S. and Canada sour or get better before Satan's arrival? All brothers, all it'll it'll all it'll all come out in the wash. Okay, uh, blood's thicker than water. Okay, militia from Arkansas. In which order should I read the books of the Bible in order to better understand God's Word? Well, when, when you order the Mark of the Beast, it's a free tape that we give to kind of get you settled into God's Word. There will be a little list of uh, tapes for beginners, books of the Bible, and it will help you get started and uh, really... I, I like to say one-on-one, -on -one, let God lead you. What is your interest? Is it prophecy? Is it history? Because God's Word has it all. And in a, over a period of time, if you understand first the outlay and the working of God's plan, what His plan is, that's why I have made that tape, The Mark of the Beast, because it gives you kind of basically the overall plan as the word fits in and then you just do as God leads you after that okay John from Arizona please document in the Bible where are where where our memories were erased in the first earth age okay, but do you know any baby that has been born that knows everything now, they might, after they grow up, claim they know everything. But a babe is born innocent. And we have to teach that babe everything that... I mean, they, they learn real quick. They pick up faster than you might think. What, what, a, what a mind that God gives these children. But their mind is erased from what happened before. Let, let me give you an example. Romans chapter 9, God loved Jacob, but Esau I hated. That's God. While they were still in their mother's womb. How can he say that and be fair? Because they were with him, just like you were in the first earth age. We were with God. And um, Esau, apparently there, did the same thing he had, did here. He didn't respect his heritage. God didn't mean anything to him. God's word didn't mean anything to him. God's plan didn't mean anything to him. Uh, and 
and uh, that's why God hated him. Well, I didn't know God hated anybody. I mean, he hated Esau. It's written in the Old Testament, Malachi 1, and Romans chapter 9 in the New Testament to show you that God uses whom he will. But did Jacob know that God loved him? He could feel it. Did Esau know God hated him? Not necessarily. Or he probably would have straightened his act up. They were uh, born innocent to make their own mind up whether they would love God or Satan in this flesh body. Uh, Luella and David from New York. I'm concerned about the one world money during Satan's tribulation. If I barter with silver or gold and the person I barter with pays me with this money, the one world money, and I use it to buy a loaf of bread, how do you think our father would look at this considering we despise the false one? Why would, why would you, what is it you would want? You would want a loaf of bread, right? Well, why would you want their money? You bought it for the loaf of bread, not the money, okay? Because the bread you eat, the money, uh, you really, I, I, I would be with you, but barter for what you want. I mean, you've got real precious metal there. You've got a real dime. Why? It's silver. It's precious metal. And it should be worth a loaf of bread. Okay? Because there are people that collect things like that and they go a long way out of their way to see that you get what you need. Uh, you know, a barter is a sharp person. Sharpen up for me. Uh, James from Missouri. I praise God for you. Will you explain? Well, thank you. I praise and I praise God for you. Will you please explain 1 Corinthians 14.2? The part about speaking uh, un, in, unto God and not men in an unknown tongue. Well, sure, I'd be happy to. What What is this word, unknown tongue? It's an unknown language in, in your native uh, arrangement of your birth. It was a language you have to learn. And if you speak... To, like if you're, the point is, God understands all languages. It's worth word out. But God's word, if you can't speak the language that the hearer understands, or that is known, if it's an unknown tongue to them, they don't even know when to say amen. You're wasting your time, in other words, okay? That's why he said always take an interpreter. Uh, Gene from Louisiana. Concerning the stone of scone, there were supposed to be three overturnings and no more, yet it was sent back to Scotland and a few years ago, making the fourth, can you explain this? I remember seeing an article in the newspaper about it being sent to Scotland. But by the way, the article was about a one in. Now it's it didn't make headlines. I remember it was sent to Skin, okay, because it is the stone of Skin. But um, <clears throat> do you know what the scripture says? It says three times, and then he will return who rightfully it belongs to. And when that fourth time happened. It opened the door of the generation of the fig tree in which Christ will return. Paul from Virginia. Sir, concerning the Kenites, how did they come through what the Bible describes as the flood, whereas eight souls were saved by water? Eight Adamic souls. Okay? Go back and read Genesis chapter 6 again. Who was Noah supposed to take on the ark? Two of every flesh. Okay, The Kenites were flesh. Each of the races was flesh. Because the races were created on the sixth day. No big mystery into that. God saw them and he was proud of them. Uh, but there were only eight Adamic souls. 
And why was that important? Because it would be through those that lineage that Christ would come. That's why the flood came in the first place is because of the hybrids that were produced by the daughters of Adam mixing with the fallen angels uh, as in that Genesis chapter 6. That's also what Christ meant in Matthew 24 when he said, in the last days it's going to be like that all over again. They're going to be giving and taking marriage again through the fallen angels. Uh, many people was like, oh, goodness. No, that's what Christ taught. And we are told that Satan and his angels, fallen ones, in Revelation chapter 12, verses 6 and 7, will be cast to this earth. And woe be to those on the earth, especially the ignorant ones. Michael from Minnesota. I have a hard time remembering scripture, so am I accountable for them? Well, uh, and I understand you have a condition, a mental condition. So it's okay. That's why I recommend that you have a, a strong concordance. Because if you can use a Webster's Dictionary, if you can just remember one word from the scripture that you wish to find, and remember, the, uh, usually pick the word that is would be least used. And that, that Strong's Concordance will take you to that scripture, chapter, verse, book, and so forth. Um, you're doing good when you have a, a mental handicap. You're studying God's Word, and He counts that perfect, okay? But I think that will help you if you'll use that strong Concordance to help you find those scriptures, just like a Webster's Dictionary, okay? John from California, Pastor Murray's uh, subject, Luke chapter 2, verse 4, Lineage of David. In Luke 2, 4, it says that Joseph, husband of Mary, was of the house and, of, and lineage of David. I was of the impression that Mary was of the house and lineage of David. She was of David as well as she was of the house and lineage of Levi, okay, as, as explained already in today's lecture. And Joseph was also of the house of David, okay, and that's, that's as it should be. Um, Joseph's lineage is given in Matthew chapter 1, which, as I stated in today's lecture, has nothing to do with the birth of four is where the rich man was crying out of heaven saying give me some slack down here send Lazarus with a drop of water for I'm in hell and then in the grave okay but he was in paradise but he was on the opposite side. It's to, it's to let you know that what he was experiencing was the disappointment that he didn't make it. That's hell for this time. There is an actual hell. It's a burning lake of fire. But it won't exist until after the great, tribula the, uh, great white throne judgment. But how would you feel as, as when you read 23, 22 and 23 of Luke 16 and realize he looks over there and that poor man, Lazarus, was with Abraham. He was at the throne of God. They were celebrating. It was wonderful. Everybody was embracing. And you realized you, were, you missed it. You're going to hell. At the great white throne judgment, unless you have some changes, you're hell bound. That hurt him bad, real bad. And I'm sure prayerfully he would have changed anything in his life if he could have at that time. That's why we've had in this book of Hebrews today, because you might be like those people in the wilderness that waited one day too long. Okay. This day, I tell you, believe and be saved. Uh, Cheryl from Florida. What are the seven churches in Revelation? 
the seven churches of Revelation, uh, seven means spiritual completeness, okay? And those churches and what they were teaching give you the condition, if you would. Incidentally, they were kind of in a circuit, a circle, symbolic of the world. But there was only two of those churches that were doing what God wanted them to do, that were pleasing Christ. And those two were Smyrna and Philadelphia, those two churches. What did they have in common? This is, this is the way you uh, find out. They had in common that they both taught who those were that claimed to be our brother Judah, but lie and were of the synagogue of Satan, meaning the Kenites. They knew them recognize them. So what does that melt down to? It means if you're in a church that doesn't teach what Smyrna and Philadelphia taught, you're in a heap of hurt. Okay? You're, you're, you're um, being shortchanged. Uh, Catherine from Connecticut. Would you explain Revelations chapter 2 verse 12 about the white stone of acquittal? Do we receive that from the Lord or on the millennium, or is that spiritually given to us when we overcome and believe? Uh, you're a little bit wrong in your verses here. Uh, it, the stone, the white stone, is mentioned in Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. Okay, 17. Uh, it is a new stone, but the word in the Greek is akin to the word count to count the number of the beast, meaning you will know the truth concerning the false Messiah. You will know his number, that is to say his address, who he is, and when he's coming, because you will understand what 666 means, which is to say the sixth seal, the sixth trump, and the sixth vial, that simply those all coordinate the appearance of the spurious Messiah. And so it is. It also says he will allow you to partake of the hidden manna. That means God's word. To let you see deeper into the truth. To give you guidance and direction. But would allow you to be able to understand the workings of our enemy. Uh, James from Kansas is it possible for a living person's soul to be in heaven and not in his body? No, absolutely not. A body is a chunk of meat. It is an organism. Your soul is your thought process. If your thought process, which is your spirit, and the soul being yourself, was in heaven and your flesh body was here, you would be in a coma. You, you would not be living, basically. The flesh itself, as long as it was not injured, would uh, the metabolism would probably continue in perfect order. But if your intellect thought process isn't there, it would be unconscious. Okay, so no, it's not possible. I think probably you're wondering about people that talk about an out-of-body experience and if it would be possible. Well, that's in the transition of dying when this takes place. The, the transition of passing uh, from the flesh body, uh, as a pastor I've been present and experienced many things. And nothing, nothing other than that is normal. But when a person's ready to go to the Father, and sometimes the Father even sending someone to receive them, a very interesting thing. I think probably that's what you're asking about. And do I believe that's possible? Yep, I do. But they're already in the transition of passing on to the Father. Jesse from Ohio. I have a question I have been wondering about for a long time. I, I do like your program. I get up every morning, okay. There's only one time you are... Let's see. Let me get to this question. Here is the question. I know Satan was here when Adam and Eve was, was here and when Christ was here. 
So the only time of my understanding, I thought the only time he was found with the chain, bound with chains, was in the thousand years that was with Christ that he was here. But he, he, you, you got to understand, when Christ said, get behind me, he meant physically. But his spirit, um, for every negative there is a positive. When the Holy Spirit is allowed to go to and fro on the earth, so is the evil spirit. God is balanced, okay? So Satan's evil spirit is here on this earth if he so chooses. And he will be released at the end of the millennium. And he will be released as it is written. Make a note of it. You didn't mention it. Revelation chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. Michael's going to kick him and his eight buddies out of heaven. And woe to you that are on earth. They're going to, they're, they, that's when Satan plays his role as spurious Messiah, the false Messiah, Antichrist. A uh, show from South Carolina is going to an auction and selling at an auction considered gambling. No. No. Uh, auctions have been a thing of our nation in buying livestock, machinery. It, it's a country bordering. In a sense, there's no way you can... Don't let somebody tell you that's gambling. All right, hey, I'm out of time. You know what? I love you all a lot. Because you enjoy studying our Father's Word, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. You care about His Word. And you know something? That causes Him to love you. Really does. When you love Him, you know what? That makes his day. He is the living word. Hearing God's word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you. Ezra and Nehemiah. These two books...